So, sorry, you talked a bit about the on-demand bus system. What is that? Yeah, so my uh, my more, uh, I guess, fun analogy, it's like Uber and an airport shuttle had a baby. Like, that's kind of how I describe it. But mm -hmm. basically what happened is, you know, the city had a citywide bus network um, redesign. It took them two years to do consultations. And the big uh, dilemma, I suppose, or the question they posed to the community is that, the city has grown a lot, but the transit budget is still the same. So looking at these routes, you have to make a choice. Do you want more frequent routes, but you might have to walk a little bit more? Or do you want, uh, you know, yeah, it's a frequency versus um, coverage trade-off. <clears throat> and then for certain neighborhoods here in the West End and many other parts of the city, where it's still like a brand new neighborhood, so ridership is really not quite there yet, or we it's just like so isolated that um, ridership has been low for a while. Um, they decided that to to not have a frequent or like a, a, a standard bus route with like the big bus and have this on-demand bus instead. So you you phone or you um, book online or you th or through the app you um, you. You book a pickup time and then you go to the designated stop. It picks you up and then it takes you to a transit station or another uh, neighborhood nearby that has the on-demand um, system or to a major road. So for me here in um, Rio Terrace, it can take me to Cameron Heights. It could take me to West Edmonton Mall, Meadowlark, and some of the neighborhoods around like Parkview and Sherwood. But um, yeah, I mean... I had to be an expert at it because of necessity. So I also take that as an opportunity to discuss it with people because people are really upset that it, it, it that their neighborhood has is, has lost their frequent nice big bus and now had this on demand bus system instead. And I tell them that I'm not thrilled about it either. But like seriously, please give it a try and give like constructive feedback when scheduling and capacity and whatnot yeah mm -hmm. overall uh, yeah it's it's actually working okay i can see the merits of it and um yeah it's already september so there's just about a year and a half left in the pilot project right right because so you don't you i saw in your uh, website it says you don't drive so you take transit exclusively so you can Uber, kind of, walking, yeah that kind of thing yeah yeah which is a, a cool perspective to have when you're running for like city councilor right because I don't know how many city councillors have that point of view, um, and so yeah. like having that, having to work with that for, firsthand is a pretty cool. Um, I guess gives gives you a, a good a handle, I guess, on it. That's yeah, absolutely. I mean, some councillors, or I think even the mayor, like they do take transit sometimes. Like there are actually times like I see them on the LRT and whatnot, but. It's a different frame of mind when you cannot drive and when you miss the bus and you're like, oh, crap, I'm stranded, which has happened to me many, many times, whether at West Edmonton Mall, at the university, South Campus, um, and all of those some different places. So, yeah, like there's a it's a it's a different way of living in the city if you're unable to drive. So. Yeah, and I really want to bring that perspective um, with my community engagement. It's also why I volunteered for three years for the Edmonton Transit Advisory Board, which we do have in the city. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, like I, I would even add to what you're saying is that like, so I, I I grew up in, you know, the deep suburbs. And so it was, you know, the, the, the buses there are effectively the, just for show. I mean, the, it's a, it's a whole lifestyle and environment where it's, it's simply like a given that you're just going to get a car. You know, it's just uh, you live in a place that's not transit accessible and it tends to be filled with people that are very affluent. And it was just I have had access to a car since I was a teenager. And it was only kind of later on and learning about um, like urban planning in school and learning about transit that you go, oh, wow, like there's this whole metro area is really a bit of a swing and a miss on setting up for transit because you know cities like ours were built at a time where transit was like seen as like or, or, or i should say that like the cars were seen as the way of the future and when the environment is so built for cars like you can only make the buses so good and so i as somebody who owns a car and you know has benefited from that and really wants to use transit more it's it's prohibitively difficult so often in that like it's you know 
even the car aside, like it's faster to ride my bike most places than it is to take transit. But you know, in winter that doesn't work. And so as, and uh, as somebody who has already committed to the expenses of owning a car, the, the registration and the insurance, um, for me, looking at a bus fare that is, you know, costing me six dollars now to go anywhere, um, or committing to another hundred dollars a month for the past, it's 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 prohibitively expensive to get into transit because you know I I make enough money to maintain a car, but not enough really to have the luxury of throwing on a transit pass on top of that. So I've I've often kind of found that's one of the like frustrations I've had from living in Edmonton is, you know, I've been to cities with wonderful transit and it's, I just wish I could explain to people how nice it is to mm -hmm. be able to like, like imagine living somewhere where somewhere is across town and you can, you can hop buses on there and you, you'll never want for a car, you know, like that's how it was in, in Seoul and Tokyo and Kobe and places like that, that I went. And it, it was so, it's so frustrating to come back here and it's just this endless expanse of asphalt. And yeah, so I don't know if I should lead up to a question here. That was just my rant, but. Mm -hmm. No, well, one thing um, that's probably worth mentioning, and I am personally looking forward to, is we are um, entering the modern times, and we are going to have a digital way to um, pay for transit fare. You, it's the ARC card system. It's like the Metro Pass that uh, New York City has, so we are finally getting it soon um it's going through it, it has a it's going through like a pilot stage right now so not everyone has access to it i think full mm. implementation is 2022 but yes since i take the bus on a regular basis sometimes carrying the lawn signs to do campaign related mm. errands um yeah i have seen people um enter you know tap the card onto the machine and hear like that beep and then you know on their way out they tap it again and i'm like this is real okay i'm excited so it's mm -hmm. happening soon yeah. Yeah, that's um it's and it's funny when to see things like that even being a pilot because there's a part of me that goes like, you know, like what are we piloting? This has been done in in many cities like we know it works. I we know. we like just do it, just implement it because it's it's I know people have described coming to Edmonton and just being shocked that uh uh like n not only do we not have the like the tap cards as so many cities do, but even uh i think it was like that you still couldn't buy the tickets at the station with a credit card like it was cash only or am i misremembering that that's correct i'm i've experienced that firsthand so when i went to calgary for uh for an errand at the philippine consulate and they're like oh that that thing that says debit like, that actually works oh i was so shocked and I was nerding out. I was like live tweeting my transit trips in Calgary all day because I was so excited. But um, yes, um, over here, it, the debit machine doesn't work. Um, now, though, again, because I'm, I've seen it quite a bit, I suppose this is part of the uh, you know um, full launch of the ARC card. The new machines um, in the transit stations, I've seen it in South Campus that yeah, there's, uh, there's the old machine where you can buy tickets and stuff. And then there's the new one right beside it. Um, where you can, I suppose, like refill your um, ARC card and there's like, um, you know, like the symbol for when you pay tap on like a typical debit or credit machine in a store, like the th mm. thingy is there too. So I'm, uh, so they're, they're, they're building an infrastructure. So hopefully it'll be there finally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That's um, uh, it's always been a frustrating thing for me because I also, I have a car, but I try to take transit. But yeah, it's, I have a whole other rant, but that's about the Calgary transit system and has nothing to do with you guys. So I'll leave it out of here. But um, it's, it's always so frustrating when you're like, you know, I have even it, like to get on the bus. It's like I have I have a twenty dollar bill and I have a credit card and I have a debit card, but I can't get on the bus because I don't have three fifty and change. Um, mm -hmm. and it's very frustrating and it's like, makes no sense. I'm like, why, why do I even have all these things, ways to pay for things if I can't pay for like the one thing that I need right now? 